Advection is perhaps the simplest way to move heat around. You simply take hot fluid and move it somewhere. There are many examples. For example, uh, heating my office. We have heating ducts that blow hot air in. And somewhere there's got to be a return which allows the cold air out. This is the most common way of heating in Australia and many other parts of the world. Advection can also cool you down. For example, let's imagine you had a door with a crack underneath it. It's a cold day outside. You might get a cold wind coming and a current, a draft of cold air goes in the cracks around the side of the door. Of course it can't flow unless it flows out, so there must be another crack or something of the other side where the hot air leaves the room. Another example would be ocean currents affecting the world's climate. You get currents of wind or currents of hot water moving from one part of the world to another, carrying enormous amounts of heat. Without these, many latitudes far from the equator would be uninhabitable. So how do you calculate something like this? Well, again, it's pretty simple. What you need to do is work out how much fluid is going in, how much fluid is going out. Typically, that'll be the same amount of fluid. You can therefore work out how, what temperature the fluid coming in is at and what temperature the fluid is going out, and then use the specific heat equation. Q equals mc delta t. So the m is the mass per second, say, that's coming in and out. C is the specific heat capacity of the fluid. And this is the difference in temperature between the fluid coming in and coming out. And this will tell you the energy per second that's being brought in or lost due to this advection. So let's take an example. Many high-end gaming computers have liquid cooling. It's a problem for all powerful computers that the chips tend to overheat. Many of them use fans to cool it down. Smartphones just rely on conduction typically to cool it down, which means they have to run slowly. But let's imagine you have your chip and you want to run it really fast because you want to play some graphics intensive computer game. So it's going to get really hot. You have to get that heat away, otherwise it'll melt and a puddle of molten silicon is not going to do anybody any favours. So let's imagine we have a water pipe. Oops. And you pump in cold water. And as it flows over the chip, it picks up heat. Heat is conducted from the chip into the pipe. And so then you get hot water flowing out. Now let's imagine, for the sake of the calculation, the water flowing in is at room temperature, so 20 degrees centigrade, and the chip is at, let's say, 80 degrees centigrade, and enough heat is conducted through so that the water, when it flows out, is at, say, 60 degrees centigrade. And let's further assume that we get one litre of water per minute. Okay, so let's calculate this per second. If you've got one litre per minute, that means we need 0 0.017 litres per second. And a litre of water weighs a kilogram, so that's about uh, the mass per second is around 0 0.017 kilograms. Delta T is the difference between the temperature in 20 and going out 60, so that's going to be 40 centigrade. Specific heat capacity of water is a whopping 4,200 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. So factoring that all in, we find that the heat per second is 0 0.017 times 4,200 times 40, which comes out as 2856 joules, which is about 
that's per second. This is the heat flow per second. That's per second. So that means we're taking power out at a rate of about 2.9 kilowatts, which is a lot. Uh, that means with a system like this, you could put a lot of power into your chip and still keep the temperature at a fairly reasonable level.